Hey, what's going on everybody? Commander Crane here, and we are back with another banner restricted announcement. Uh, so today, the, the day is February 15th. Uh, we're recording this the same day the banner restricted announcement is released. Uh, so day, today we're going to be talking about basically the cards that are banned, uh, what that means for the given formats. I'm going to give a little bit of insight, um, and then we're also going to go over Wizard's statement as well. Um, so we're just going to jump right into it here. I'm actually pretty excited to talk about a lot of this today. Uh, so... We're going to start with Historic. So first, Omnath, Locus of Creation, banned in Historic. Uh, so this was already suspended for a while, so it hasn't been in the format for a bit. Um, basically, this card is just way too efficient. I mean, it draws cards, make mana. I mean, it's this card is incredible. It's just basically just a huge, huge value engine. Um, I'm not surprised that they decided to ban this overall good for the format that they did that. And then we got Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath, banned, not even suspended. It is banned in Historic. Um, so overall, everybody knows what Uro's been doing. It is extremely efficient. Um, I mean, getting all that life gain, the card advantage, um, being able to bring it back incredibly easy uh, is just too much for the Historic metagame and other metagames, as we will see in just a second. Overall, not surprised that this card is banned. Uh, it definitely needed to get done. Uh, so Pioneer, we've got Balustrade Spy. So for those who don't know what it does, 2-3 Flying 4. And there's a battle target player reveals cards from the top of their library until they reveal a land. And they put the rest in their graveyard. Basically what this does is it actually does two different things. It's a very easy combo for it to do where you basically mill your entire library um, and then you draw and then you win the game. Uh, and then also with Pioneer, there is a... Um, Basically, Pioneer Dredge, for the most part, plays Prized Amalgam, uh, the ghoul, the one ghoul I always forget the name of, um, Narc Amoeba. Basically, yeah, it's just, it's it's Pioneer Dredge. Um, oh, sorry, real quick, let me double check. Okay, perfect, just making sure that that was recording. Okay, so, next, we've got Teferi Time Raveler. A little bit surprising, to be honest. Um, so, obviously, people know what this card does, too. Uh, extremely efficient for control decks. Uh, makes control mirrors, honestly, really, really, really do nothing, for the most part. Um, Teferi, overall, I'm really glad to see this card go. Um, me, personally, the decks I play, um, don't get too hindered with Teferi, but Teferi is a little annoying. Glad to see the card go, for sure. Makes games not very interactive. Overall, just doesn't lead to fun gameplay. We got Undercity Informer, which is basically the other half to Balustrade Spy. Um, sacrifice Creature, Target Player reveals cards until they reveal a land card. Basically does the same thing as Balustrade Spy with the Dredge deck. We'll just call it Pioneer Dredge. Um, so, yep, that's why that one's been. We got Uro, Titan Nature's Wrath, and Pioneer. Um, this one was definitely very expected for sure. Um, I actually have a Simic Devotion deck uh, with four copies of Uro in it. Uro is just insane. Uh, the card definitely needed to get banned, basically for the same reasons as Historic. Um, even with the little bit of increase in power with Pioneer, it still really wasn't enough. Um, so definitely, I'm glad to see Uro go. Uh, it just wasn't overall good for the metagame. Then we have Wilderness Reclamation is banned. Um, really not a lot to say about this card. It it basically did all the same stuff it did in Historic 2. Overall, Wilderness Reclamation, just a really, really silly card. I I don't even know. that This card is just so powerful. I, it definitely slipped under a lot of people's radar for a long time. Um, and even this card has actually seen a lot of play in Modern too. So we'll actually see if it even sticks around in Modern long term. I could potentially see it be, be getting banned. Uh, so that's done with Pioneer. We're going to move into Modern. So Modern, we have Field of the Dead. So... Basically, the only deck that was playing this, at least from my understanding, was the Amulet Titan decks. Definitely, this card getting banned really weakens Amulet Titan for sure. Um, basically, this was honestly their main win con um, right after uh, Primeval Titan. But a lot of the times, I've seen decks just go all in on Field of the Dead, not even so much Primeval Titan. This card is just way too efficient. I mean, you make all the zombies and it's a land. I mean, not a lot of decks can beat this. I mean, you can just play Field of the Dead and just just play lands and just grind out. I mean, it's crazy how efficient this card is. I'm definitely glad to see it go. It definitely needed to get the ban hammer in modern. Mystic Sanctuary, another card that I'm personally, you're going to, as a common trend here, I'm really happy a lot of these cards are gone. So Mystic Sanctuary basically just leads to really unfun gameplay. I can't tell you how many times, oh, Cryptic Command, uh, I'm going to bounce my Mystic Sanctuary, and then I'm going to play it my next turn. I'm going to grab the Cryptic Command back. Just 
completely unfun garbage gameplay. I do not like Mystic Sanctuary. That card was really, really unfair. It was just way too good. And I've actually, the only deck I've ever played this in is Commander, and it is still extremely, extremely good in Commander. Glad to see it go overall. Oh, this card is just incredible, especially at common level. Not a surprise it's even banned in Pauper either. So then we go into Simeon Spirit Guide. So this is a card I actually do play. I like to play a lot of Scred, and I do play this card. Um, I'm not surprised to see it go. I'm actually surprised it took this long. I remember in 2016, that was one card that was highly talked about getting banned. Um, so overall, I'm not surprised to see it go. Uh, it just stunk that it took this long. But yeah, really, this honestly, it might have been possibly okay if it wasn't for the next card here i'm not 100 sure maybe that was just their final let's just get rid of this now but we have tibble's trickery so this was a big one where people weren't sure if it was going to get banned or not overall i'm glad it did those who don't know it's extremely easy to get turn to uh like ember cools ulamogs stuff like that with this card um tibble's trickery just leads to really unfun gameplay i mean half the time you play and this is also relevant it it does do the same thing in Standard and Pioneer. Whether or not it will need to get banned in those formats, I'm not sure. But really, just with Tibble's Trickery, I mean, it's half the time it's just turn two, play a zero drop, counter it. Here's my big thing. And there's nothing you can do. Y you can't win. So overall, I'm glad to see that they took the final step with this instead of letting it potentially ruin a metagame. So I'm really glad that they took the extra step, got rid of Tibble's Trickery. Um, overall, healthy to see that go in the format. And ending with Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath. So this card, incredible and modern as well. Um, I it, it made sense that it had to go. It's just way too efficient. Uh, warps the metagame around it. It was also actually seeing play with, I believe, Omnath too in modern. Um, so definitely glad to see Uro go. Um, I did play this card as well in Pioneer. Oh, sorry, modern. But it, it definitely needed to go. Card is way too efficient. The most played creature in the in competitive magic up until this banner restricted announcement so glad to see it go but you know that's what it is so we're gonna move into legacy here um just as a quick i'm not as familiar with legacy adventures i definitely do understand the basics though of what it is i used to play a lot of legacy so we're gonna move into it arkham's astrolabe is banned this card needed to get banned this card is just way too efficient uh, it just leads to just decks being able to play four color extremely efficient. Uh, I mean, it is legacy, so you're going to have obviously your fetches, your good dual lands, but still even having Arkham's Astrolabe is just way too efficient. I'm glad to see this card go. It, 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 I'm surprised. I mean, when this card was came out a long time ago, I was like, okay, you know, it's an okay card. If they took the draw card away from it, it would be perfectly fine. Obviously, it wouldn't even be that good. You wouldn't, want to, you wouldn't even want to play it. But yeah, overall, this card is just way too efficient. Uh, there's a reason it was already banned in Modern and uh, Pauper. Um, definitely glad to see it go. Dreadhorde Arcanist, just way, 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 way too efficient card. I feel like almost every deck that plays red plays this card. I mean, it's just insane. Uh, the amount of value that you get from Dreadhorde Arcanist, I'm not surprised to see it go. Uh, and then we got Oko Thief of Crowns. So this was a little surprising. Um, again, I don't play a ton of Legacy, but at least from my understanding, at least a lot of the people I talked to, they said Oko was perfectly fair in the format. Um, I'm surprised to see it go. It still basically does the same thing that it did in Standard and Modern and Pioneer and Historic. Does the exact same thing, um, but still even too powerful for the Legacy format, which is very interesting. And then our last one, we got Vintage. Lurus of the Dream Den is unbanned. Uh, basically, they banned this before they did the errata with the companion mechanic. Um, and then with the mechanic being changed, now they said it's fine, which I personally think it's okay too. Okay, and then we have one more part about this. So, rule change. Additionally, we are updating the rules for Cascade to address interactions in older formats. Um, for those who don't want to read this, basically it's saying uh, when you cast the spell, you have to exile something that costs less. Meaning, so if Bloodbraid Elf is 4 man with Cascade, you cannot Cascade into the Planeswalker side of Tybalt. Well, the actual Tybalt. You can't do that anymore. Now you have to build a Cascade into a spell that is less converted mana cost. Um, so basically, the biggest reason why this was fixed was because of Tybalt being able to cast a seven mana planeswalker off of the cascade uh, obviously just incredibly powerful is a reason why it needed to get changed and i'm very glad that they did that as well so that's going to be this part if you'd like to read that i will leave a link 
in the description below if you'd like to check this out for yourself. Um, so we are going to move into this. I'm not going to be reading all this. Uh, I'm just going to be skimming through it for the most part, but we're going to be talking about um, what they said in their statements giving the ban announcements. So format changes throughout the year with pandemic conditions resulting in fewer high top table tournaments where corresponding slowed the pace, which I thought that was weird. I actually feel like they increased it for the most part. Recent community discussions made it clear that the fans of those formats are interested in seeing shakeups to those metagames. Absolutely. I've been really thinking a lot of the eternal formats have been needing a big shakeup, and I'm very glad to see this. So, we got Historic. Dex Boltron, Uro Titan. Titan of Nature's Wrath are the most played in Historic and have been for a while now. Absolutely. It, it just feels like it feels like whenever I play on Magic Online or Arena, it's just, it's, well, sorry, Arena, it's just Uro. It's just Uro, Uro, Uro. Because of the examples of how this card is performed in other large formats, we do not feel like we, we need to suspend the card to see how the format reacts. They're just banning it. On the folks, the creation is currently suspended historic, and our data indicates that diversity and interest in the meta would be harmed by reintroducing the card now. So they banned it. Makes sense, honestly. Glad to see that our card, that card not come back. So Pioneer. Our vision for Pioneer is to be a collection of the most po fun, powerful, and iconic cards and strategies from recent standard formats. My, mind the fun, the fun part. However, there is a dividing line between powerful and iconic and overbearing and unfun. Absolutely. In this update, we are addressing several cards and strategies. That we feel cross the line and aren't re representative of the play experience we'd like Pioneer to offer. Absolutely. I think that's a big step that they need to take. In my opinion, with Pioneer, I think a lot of the unfair decks they need to be taking out. Like, for instance, with Battle Street Spy, they're going to talk about that in a second. I think you need to have, I'm not going to say a bland, but like, I don't think Pioneer is a place for like most combo stuff like that. I think Pioneer needs to be, if you will, a vanilla format you know you have your control you have your mid-range you have your control mid-range aggro um and not really any combo i just don't think combo or anything like that is really a good place for pioneer in general which they've been doing a very good job of that and i'm very glad that they took this next step here um so uro here obviously has been one of the most dominant creatures of pioneer as a several of it, as is featured in several of the most played and most winning decks, ultimately we feel Uro's power level is out of line with other cards and strategies available in Pioneer. Absolutely, they're banning it. In addition, we're taking this opportunity to ban Teferi and Willis Reclamation from Pioneer as cards that previously overstayed their welcome in Standard. Removing Teferi Time Reveler will have the added benefit of lowering the power level of Niv to Light decks, which are among the most played and most winning archetypes. Absolutely. With Teferi, it, it honestly made um, the what's the name of it? the the niv delight decks honestly just that much more unbearable it, it was hard it was really hard to be able to interact with teferi um so i'm definitely glad to see that go um which was honestly in my opinion the only deck that was really really ne needing it to get banned except with like blue white control like any blue white control shell it made control mirrors just impossible it was just extremely linear basically it was who can keep their teferi out for the most part so that's really it. Without Teferi Time Rattler to hold him in the check, we're concerned that the metagame share of Wilderness Reclamation decks would rise, so we're choosing to preempt that outcome. I appreciate them taking that extra step. It definitely seems like in the past they took an approach where it was like, okay, we're just going to wait and not do more, but now they're just, nope, we're going to take the initiative and we're going to get rid of it now. And I, excuse me, really appreciate that step that Wizards of the Coast is taking here. Finally, we're seeing concerning win rate and metagame shares for Oops All Spells deck, which use Bowser's Spy and Arsene Format to mill its entire library, have no cards that count as lands while in the library. Given the difficulty of interacting with a strategy, it isn't easily held in check by natural metagame forces. We don't believe Pioneer can be at its most fun with Oops All Spells being a large part of the metagame, so we're choosing to ban Bowser's Spy and Undercity Informer. Definitely glad to see that. Um, I was actually surprised that they took initiative on this deck, honestly. Um, I'm glad that they did it, though, for sure. It just... Yeah, it's just not fun. It's it's not a fun deck to play against. So we would modern. As in Pioneer, or Titan and Nature's Wrath has become a dominant fixture across many of the top modern decks and operates at a power level that makes it difficult for other mid-range and control strategies to compete with. To open space in the metagame for a greater variety of mid-range strategies and other slower decks to coexist, we're choosing to ban Uro in modern as well. It makes sense. Um, then we move to the next one along with Uro. We're addressing the two land cards frequently used by ramp control strategies, Field of the Dead and Mystic Sanctuary. I... It needed, they needed to they needed to ban those cards. It's just impossible to interact with. Unless you're playing Lead and Destruction or Blood Moon. Both lands create repetitive and non-interactive game states in the late game for a relatively low deck building cost to promote to promote more back and forth gameplay and interaction over win conditions. We're choosing to remove them. Awesome. Appreciate this. This card I'm a little bittersweet about. Simeon Spirit Gate is a card that we had our eye on for some time as an enabler that speeds up fast combos. This card has been on their radar for 
oh man, I want to say five, six years. I mean, they've been potentially thinking about banning this card. When I first got into the modern format, this was a big hot topic card along with uh, Mox Opal a long time ago. Which Mox Opal really only got banned for Urza. We're not going to talk about that right now, though. Um, as the modern card pool has grown, so too have the capability for decks to assemble early game-winning combinations from hand, with some recent examples include Oops All Spells and the Tibble's Trickery deck. To slow down that category of combo decks as a whole and give opponents more time to set up interactive plays in the early game, Simeon Spirit Guide is banned. So... With this, this is the biggest thing I'm wondering about. I, I think this card should have been banned a long time ago, but I guess I'm really confused on if Tybalt's Trickery is what made this card get banned and they decide, you know what, we're just going to get rid of this now, just in the future. I, I, I personally don't know, but with Simeon Spirit Guide, it makes sense. It I mean, you're not doing anything fair with it. There, there's no... Any deck... It's, it's very rare that a fair deck plays Simeon Spirit Guide. I would say decks like Scred are maybe the fairest decks that actually play Simeon Spirit Guide. Um, but still, even have, like having a turn to Blood Moon, like, obviously with Ponza, that does it a little bit more fair. But like, Ad Nauseam, Tybalt's Trickery, like, decks are, that are playing this are not doing fair thing. What's what's the other one? Um, the As Foretold deck, too, is also playing this. I mean, it's like, n nothing fair is going on when you're playing Simeon Spirit Guide. So, I am glad to see them uh, take it. I just wish that they should have gotten rid of this card a long time ago, honestly. Okay. Finally, there has been much discussion about new Tybalt's Trickery decks in several formats. We see Modern as the format where those decks are uniquely problematic via Tybalt's Trickery interaction with Cascade. With the overall win rate of the deck hasn't shown to be problematic, we believe it contributes to non-games that make Modern less fun to play, as the goal of this update is to shake up the metagame into a more fun spot. We're concerned that a continued metagame presence of Tibble's Trigger decks would work against that goal, therefore we're banning it. So yeah, this basically lines up perfectly. You get so many non-games it goes on the one side, either Tibble's Trickery sit there and stumbles and keeps hitting their own Tibble's Trickeries and it doesn't do anything, or you get a turn to Ulamog or something in play and the game's basically done. Overall, this this is just not a healthy card for the metagame, really any metagame that this is relevant, so we'll see if they actually take any effect in Standard um, or Pioneer at all with this, but overall, I'm really glad to see Tibble's Trickery gone. It just... It just doesn't do anything to benefit the metagame. It doesn't do anything. So I'm glad that they're getting rid of that. So we're moving on to Legacy. While Balance hasn't looked problematic in Legacy, we've heard community feedback that a few cards have come to draw on, come to draw too much of the focus for deck building gameplay. Uh, Oko, I'm not even going to read this. Basically, it's just the same thing. It's going to say Legacy's format that shut off a tremendous variety of deck building options. Um, and because of its flower power and flexibility, Oko can provide an easy answer even to unanticipated threats and defenses and generally homo homogenizes gameplay i'm sorry i apologize i cannot read gameplay patterns in a way that's counter to the spirit of the format therefore we're banning oko i'm honestly really surprised to see this card go um in legacy overall i don't i can't personally say because i don't play the format um but you know i guess it makes sense this card is it just it does the same thing i guess it's just an extremely hard card to really grind out it's it's impossible to grind out oko it's impossible Orkham's Astrolabe is another card that has contributed to the power and consistency of Snoko decks traditionally. Legacy deck builders need to make choice about whether they have easy access to many colors or build mana bases that's resilient to Wasteland and Blood Moon. Orkham's Astrolabe allows mana bases to have a both high color flexibility and high resilience to mana denial. Yeah, I can relate to that, especially in Modern. Um, it, it, Arkham's Astrolabe is a card so powerful, at least in the Modern format, which it's already banned there, that burning pillages on this is that necessary? Because you can Blood Moon lock them all you want, but if they got Astral, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter. So, no. This card is just incredibly efficient. Um, so, ultimately, we think a narrow class of decks having such resilience for a relatively low investment is an advantage that leads to less metagame diversity. Absolutely. When you're having four, cor four color piles show up all over the format playing this card, you gotta do something about it, I guess. Next, Treadhor Arcanist has proved to be powerful in a game defining in a way that further adds to cards and strategies that were already amongst the most powerful, like Teamer Delver. Teamer Delver, yeah, th this card in the in the deck is incredible. I mean, like, I actually saw a list the other day, somebody playing, basically the deck was just playing, like, the most expensive card was Oko, and it was just Dreadhorde Arcanist, just Delver Value. That's all. That's the whole deck. That's all it was. It, just incredible. Ultimately, the community sentiment we've heard is that Dreadhorde Arcanist makes gameplay revolve around it too early in the metagame, and that too many games come down to whether an opponent can immediately remove it. Therefore, we're choosing to ban Dreadhorde Arcanist. Makes sense. And ending it here, 
at least for the legacy portion. Finally, we did we did discuss banning Uro, Titan Nature's Wrath, and Legacy as well, but we feel its power level is more in line with the overall power level of Legacy as compared to Historic, Pioneer, and Modern. The bar is high for what three and four mana spells need to accomplish in Legacy, and we believe Uro can coexist as a competitive but not dominant option. Additionally, the bans of Oko Thief of Crowns and Akram's Astrolabe should significantly decrease the metagame share of existing decks that Uro should naturally slot into. Um... So, this makes sense, honestly. Um, with Uro, I don't know if it's really overlined, to be honest. Um, I feel like it's a card that can exist in Legacy. And yes, definitely again with, um, with, sorry, I'm, I'm losing my, I'm losing my train of thought here. So, it feels like it can exist, especially with Oko and Arkham's Estral, I believe, there's a good chance it will be perfectly fine in Legacy. Maybe, if not, even not even playable. I, I don't know, to be honest with you. Um, but overall, I think it was a good step to not quite ban this. Um, so we're going to move to Vintage here. Shortly after the release of Akori Lair of Behemoths, Lurus of the Dream Den was added to the Vintage ban list as the only card on the list solely due to power level, and obviously you couldn't restrict it because you could play as your companion. A key aspect of this Spirit of Vintage is that we'd like as much of Magic's card library to be available as possible, so we're running the experiment of unbanning Lurus of the Dream Den. We'll be keeping an eye on what this does to the metagame and are willing to revert the change if needed, but we believe that Lurus should be given another chance to prove itself under the new companion row. I like this. I definitely do. Um, with keeping it, with paying the three, obviously you can get fast mana, no problem in Vintage. I don't know how relevant this is going to be. Uh, obviously Lurus, extremely powerful card. Potentially it'll make it okay. I, I don't know. We're going to find out, honestly. Um, so, yeah, we will see. Uh, overall, definitely interesting. And then the Cascade rule change, um, we already talked about this earlier. Uh, modal double face cards were designed to allow both faces to be played in all situations. Uh... And that popped up didn't mean that. Uh, in situations where, where certain criteria is mentioned, being able to play or cast the back face when it doesn't meet the criteria is not intuitive. This confusion, plus being allowed to cast spells without paying the random cost, they shouldn't be able to, makes Cascade an issue. Well, Cascade is just an issue in general, I feel like, with, with anything below Legacy for the most part. I just think it's absurd. I really don't like dealing with Cascade. Um... But here's the example they give. For example, if you cast Bloodbird Elf and Exile Valkali, God of Lies, from your library, you'll be able to cast Valkali, but not Tybalt Cosmic Impersonator. On the other hand, if you exile Cosmina, God of Voyage, you may cast either Cosmina or the Omen Keel, as each face card has less converted cost than Bloodbraid Elf. Absolutely. So basically, that's going to be the whole the gist of it here, is that you can't cast anything that costs more, um, which, yeah, like just being able to cast Tybalt is just... I mean, we're doing it on turn two. It's just, just, it's just nonsense. It's nonsense. So, that's basically the whole gist of the ban announcement here. Uh, overall, I think we had a lot of positive changes that are definitely going to shake up some formats. Um, personally, what I think is, I think especially, I'm only going to give insight on formats I really know here. With historic, I think uh, it. Historic's going to be relatively the same. It's not going to change a lot for the most part. Soul Tide decks that play Uro can definitely adapt, not a problem. At least with Pioneer, this definitely opens up a lot of fair aggro decks and control decks to definitely come back for sure. Um, especially with getting rid of these five cards makes aggro just wide open, honestly. Uh, definitely makes the deck a lot better. Actually could result in Mono Red being a little rougher, just because especially if we see decks like Steel Leaf Stompy come back, it can definitely mess with Mono Red decks for sure, just because they go bigger than it. Um, but overall, I, I'm definitely interested interested to see where Pioneer goes, because at this point, there's not really any combo-related decks, uh, so it definitely could lead to a very interesting Pioneer metagame. Modern overall, <laughs> Modern is going to be, I mean, it's been shaken up almost every set that comes out now at this point. Um, I don't know exactly where it's going to go from here. Um, at least I know one card that people were potentially talking about was Burning Inquiry with Dredge, which obviously that deck is still going to be on top here. Um, but yeah, with, I mean, the Titan decks get a little bit weaker, really blue dot deck just gets weaker in general. Uh, we don't have that garbage Simeon Spear Guide, Tibble's Trickery combo anymore, which is awesome. And Uro is banned. So there's a good chance that the four mana, uh, what was it? The four color landfall deck overall is not going to be doing awesome. Uh, so Honestly, it's really interesting. I, I'm not quite sure what's going to happen. And with Legacy, I don't have enough input on that. Um, really, I think it's just the Delver decks get weaker. But obviously, they'll still be relevant. Um, and then with Vintage, I don't even I don't even know Vintage. But I'm assuming that this will definitely see some play to a certain extent. But overall, definitely really excited. Me personally, about this ban and restricted announcement. It's going to shake up all the formats. I'm really excited to see where this is going to go for sure. Um, but I'd like to thank everyone for joining. As always, like and subscribe, share it, 
you know, it, it, pre it helps the channel out a lot. I really appreciate that. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for joining to me today, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.